How's everyone today? It's Chris here from Tech Tablets. I've got the TechLast P98 4G. Been using it for a while now. And this is the stock launcher as you can see. I've just flashed the recent firmware update which is 1.16. I couldn't actually just do the over there update for some reason. It wouldn't let me do that. So I'm on the newer version, I'll just show you. That it's uh, still Android 4.4.4, not Android 5 KitKat, sorry, Lollipop, it's on KitKat at the moment. And you can see that it's running KitKat. So far the tablet is fast, the wireless reception is good, the build quality is also excellent, it's just like the TechLast uh, X98 Air 3G, so the build quality is great. You have that SIM card slot, it does work on 4G for me at least here in Spain. It works on bands uh, 3 which is 1800 megahertz I think, 1800 and 2100 megahertz 4G. So that's working fine for people in Europe, US buyers, I'm not too sure if that's going to work for you. So people on T-Mobile and other networks might have problems with that, but the speeds are fine. The CPU seems to be very cool. It does not really get that warm at all. The uh, temperatures running uh, games and things, it really gets up to around 40 something degrees 50. It's a very good chipset in that regard. That heat wise, it seems to be excellent. What I have found disappointing is the uh, lack of support for some games don't seem to work. I've tried, this is just Alien vs Predator, and you'll find that this is common occurrence that the game just, it, unfortunately, it has stopped and it doesn't work. The same works for Dead Trigger 2 and a couple of other games I've tried just seem to fail to to work and load on me. Uh, not too sure why, but that's probably maybe something to do with the ROM, maybe it's the chipset, hardware support or something, but the ROM itself is quite poorly optimized because when you do have a look, running things like CPU-Z to have a look at the uh, RAM usage, you can see there, this is the, uh, obviously it's going to 8 core CPU here. You can see when having a look at, uh, see thermal, it's really quite a cool running chip there. Nothing's getting that hot. I have just been using it lightly at the moment. Uh, the battery life is also excellent. But when you have a look at the RAM usage, available RAM, we've got 944 megabytes is free. And I don't really think I've got much running no, like hardly anything really running at all. There's nothing really running. The, the ROM seems really poorly optimized to me because uh, if you have a look at that, you, you've only got 50% of the RAM available. On Even on a fresh reboot, you're only getting around maybe 1100 megabytes free RAM, which seems to be a lot. Why the ROM's taking up about 900 or maybe it's the allocation of the um, RAM to the uh, GPU, the Mali, T760, which for me has also been quite a disappointing GPU. I'll just show you quickly a couple of benchmarks that I've already run. If I can just find the gallery here now. So looking at benchmarks here, this was the 3D Mark uh, Ice Storm score. Now that is a little bit lower than what I suspect, expected from this. Uh, this GPU here. I know that the Bay Trails, the Z37, 36, or the 35, those Atom Bay Trail chips with the quad cores, they can get around 7,300 there, so there's a little bit less. And when it comes to the iStorm Unlimited score, that is really quite low there. And the Bay Trails seem to be able to do a lot better than that. I've, I've noticed Bay Trails can have a score of about 14,000, and this is just shy of 10,000. So when it comes to the 3D, it's a little bit disappointing. Otherwise, it still seems pretty much quick and snappy when you're doing everything else. Uh, there's a lot of bloat that kind of comes on there to start with. And um, this launcher here, you probably want to get rid of that and use something like Apex Launcher or Nova Launcher. There was an issue with the camera on the first firmware I had that if you took a photo, it would later just come out completely black. And that seems to now be fixed which is good, but there's still that real troubling issue that I'm having with the tablet at the moment is that I can turn the screen off and come back to the tablet about 10 minutes later and go to put it on and oh, hang on, it won't turn on. So hopefully it is actually going to turn on now. 
Normally you just quick it off, uh, flick it off, sorry, now it would come back on quickly, but if I left it for an hour, two hours, even sometimes 15 minutes, then I need to flip the tablet over and I need to actually use the reset little button in the back. So I need to use this little tool here and stick that in the back there to reset it, which is really annoying. So the ROM itself has some stability issues. It seems to be when the tablet or it goes into deep sleep, it's just not coming out of it. Uh, which the update 1.16 was supposed to fix, well, to stability issues it mentioned, I'm pretty sure. So the stability is uh, still an issue with this tablet. And saying that, everything else seems to be pretty good, like running the internet, um, just looking around on the internet. That's all fast enough and all very well. And... So if you're doing anything, if you're not gaming or anything, the performance is quite good. And battery life, you're looking probably around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time. It is really quite good. So you can see, yeah, this is the BBC website there. Everything loads up fast. Performance is, is really good. There is no complaints really there at all when it comes to that aspect of the tablet. And if I just quickly show you now the battery stats, I haven't actually been using it much at the moment because it, I left it on overnight and it got stuck in a deep sleep there, which wasn't the best. So if you have a look under the battery now, so I've only been running three and a half hours. That big gap there was when the tablet was actually stuck in the deep sleep that I couldn't get out of it so I had to push the reset button and that's another reset there. I'm not using a SIM card at the moment. Hopefully someone maybe from XDA or there's anyone who makes, wants to make a custom ROM for this or someone who knows maybe about the issues with this MediaTek tablet or the MediaTek chipset that's causing deep sleep issues. If anyone's got a fix for this then please do post in the comments. So the screen Screen on time of just over two hours there, and I've lost about, well, I lost 22%. So, and that's running the brightness, I think I've got it around, yeah, around about, if that's for 50, that was around about 40%, maybe just a little bit less brightness, which seems pretty good. The screen is nice and bright, and it doesn't dim down that much, really. That's the dimmest setting, and um, that's maximum brightness right there. So running about there, I've managed to get roughly around 10% every hour of screen on time, which I think is very decent. So you're looking around 9 hours, maybe if you put it on the lowest brightness setting, maybe even squeeze out 10, where I'm using it at the moment, I think about, yeah, about 8 hours at least. And it's not factoring in, of course, things like when you start to play games, that's going to go through the battery quite quickly and uh, haven't stored too many games on here at the moment because I had to do a factory reset I was running just a few other games to test and I'll just quickly show you Modern Warfare 4 Modern Combat sorry And I'll just show you the full volume, which is right there now. I've only just started the game to get into it, just as a quick test to see how it runs. So it, it's um, not going to be that choppy in most games, but I did test out Asphalt 8 Airborne. There's another video of that. If you check on my channel, and I found that Asphalt 8 did actually lag a little bit. It was quite choppy. It wasn't what I would really call playable. So that could be down to some optimization that's needed on Tickless behalf of the ROM. But this game here, which isn't the lightest game, it's not the uh, newer. Uh, modern Combat 5 which is more demanding but still a relatively demanding game 
lots going on. It seems to run fine with no slowdown or anything there. So just quickly look around. Seems to run just fine and it is playable. So if you're using this for gaming, videos, internet, it's still going to be a good tablet. But I would recommend just holding off until TechLast gets an update for this out that fixes that deep sleep issue. Because it's, it's just completely unstable at the moment. It's such a pain to have to push the reset button and, and start all over again. Just because the tablet, it's gone into a deep sleep and there's just no way to get out of it. And... Hopefully it is something that Tech Class would know about. I'd assume that uh, they would have probably sold quite a few of these already and they'd have users coming in with a lot of complaints saying, look, you know, this tablet is, is just uh, freezing up on me. It's not coming out of sleep, completely black. And it's just unacceptable that it's like that at the moment. So wait, if you're thinking about buying this because you're interested in the, obviously the price of it's not too bad and it is a 4G tablet so if you want the 4G and you are interested in using a tablet similar to this one I recommend looking at maybe the TechLast X98 Air 3G they've got dual boot then so you've got the best of both worlds you've got Windows and Android otherwise if you do want this tablet well just wait until there is an update that actually officially confirms and fixes the deep sleep issue because that is just uh, really problematic Overall, it's not too bad. Uh, there is a slight buzz too on the audio. I'm just using some headset plug before. It does seem to support a microphone because if I do plug in an Android headset that I've got, the um, dual beat, quad beat, sorry, headset that I have of LG that supports uh, a microphone, it does come up with like a microphone logo on Android. But the sound doesn't seem right, so it's still using like the... Apple kind of set up. It's only really supporting the two prong uh, 3.5 millimeter jack there for the headset, not the the four which supports the microphone. That seems to be a bit of a problem. And I'll just demonstrate that now. If I plug in here the Quad Beat LG headphones that do have a microphone, you can see there's a microphone on them here. It comes up with a logo that it is supporting the headset, well, it's detected it, headset and microphone. But it doesn't actually seem to work. So, it sounds funny too. It's almost like you're missing one track of audio. It does not sound right when you're using it. But if I were to use a standard plug like this, and which is just a standard stereo one, plug that one in, and then I don't have any problems at all with the audio. There is a slight kind of buzz or a bit of static just behind it when listening to music tracks. It's not as bad as some of the other tablets. I have heard that with, for example, the TechLast X80H that had a bit of a buzz through the headphone jack. This is uh, not as bad, but it's still not 100% clean audio that I would like. It's definitely not as clean and as good as my Note is which is currently recording this video so anyway I think I've talked enough about this the TechLast P98 4G good hardware lovely screen good brightness great battery life uh, it's let down by ultimately by poor software optimization poor 3d performance for the chipset and then there's that deep sleep issue that I've mentioned a few times now which is a real deal breaker at the moment so the hardware's there, but the software's not. So TechLast need to pick up their game a little bit, come out with a better ROM, fix the problems, fix maybe the 3D drivers that are causing gaming issues with some games not running, and the performance issues. Once they do that, then this will be a decent octa-core 4G tablet, I think, and one that uh, will probably be a bit cheaper in the future once the prices start to come down a little. So this, at the moment, is around about 210 US, which isn't bad but with those problems stay away from it at the moment and you've got dual core tablets now for around 230 US 
X98 Air or the Cube i6, which is definitely something you should probably look at. If you're thinking you want an Android tablet and you might want to use documents or something like that, Windows, then go for a dual boot one. Anyway, that's the P98 4G. Thanks for watching the video. If you did like it, please do give me a like. Do subscribe, I'll have more up and coming videos of tablets from China. I'm currently waiting for the Cube i7, which is a Core M tablet, and I'm waiting on the Techlast X 16 HD, which is a 10.1 inch dual boot tablet as well from Techlast. It's another one I'm waiting to review. And there is also the Pipo 4W, sorry, the W4S that I'm waiting on, another dual boot tablet similar to the Chewy VI8 that I'm also waiting on so I have a lot more videos up and coming within a week or so once I start getting these new tablets once they arrive. Thanks for watching the video hopefully see you in my next one. Bye for now.